Hi, everybody. Lee Scott here. Thank you for watching and or listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee, where we talk about life, leadership, and legacy. And before I introduce my very, very, very special guest, um, if you have not done it yet, go on YouTube and all podcasting platforms and subscribe to Leading with Lee today. So my very special guest today is somebody who's really impacted me directly and indirectly, probably over the last decade, which is so interesting. Uh, and it's so amazing to have him on today. He is a he is an educator. He is an owner of a uh, is it Taekwondo? Uh, it's mixed martial arts. Yeah. Mixed martial arts studio. He he's he is a former principal and an administrator. He's a former mayor of my hometown, and <laughs> he is a pastor of Relevant Empowerment Church in Jackson, Mississippi. Please welcome the Honorable. I got to message you. I got to message you. I got to message you. Yeah. Uh, please welcome Tony Yarber. How are you doing, sir? Hey, man. Hey, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to be here. That's how I'm doing. Um, that is, and I and honestly, my excitement is just being able to be here in this moment with you. Um, to be able to see you uh, become exactly who I knew you would become, and and uh, just watching this process. Um, why we haven't had maybe a sit down in a, in a really long time, you got to know I've been paying attention. I've been watching. I've been admiring. And uh, I've even been taking notes. So Godspeed, man. I'm proud, of, I'm proud of you and I'm proud of what God is doing in you, through you and for you. All right. Thank, thank you so much. That, I, that really means a lot to me. Um, so my first question for you is, how are you doing? I mean, obviously, everybody's been dealing with pandemic land and dealing with all this stuff that's going on in the culture in our society right now with uh, we're still in the middle of people trying to figure out how to take care of their health, how to take care of themselves, how to uh, be focused and intentional about um, the way they're living lives. How are you doing? How's your family doing? And how are you uh, taking care of yourself in this time? Well, family is, is uh, pretty well right now. Um, thankfully, uh, our family is uh, vaccinated. Everybody's fully vaccinated. Um, and thankfully, um, we have really been taking serious those precautions that have been uh, issued. Even at church, church is doing doing well. Have been taking on a, um, where we don't pressure anybody to be in this one hand and practice social distancing and all of those things but personally i'm just listening to my body I, i'm i'm um being sure that i get my vitamin d in me uh because you know black vitamin so i'm making sure i'm getting my body sure that i'm hydrated um and and just being and washing my hands man i know, I know everybody talks about masking up and that's great I mask up too, but I need folks talking more about hand washing. Yes. So, so it's been good. God has been good to me during the pandemic. Uh, I've learned a lot about Tony. I've uh, uh, gone through a lot of self improvement um, during the pandemic. So I'm 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 in a good place. Good, good. I I I would agree on the hand washing thing. I I don't know what it is about people when they go into the bathroom. I don't listen. I could go on a whole tangent about men. I have seen it way too many times. Isn't that crazy, bro? I I don't know what it is. I I, I don't. You, you were just the skin. Yes. How you know yes. 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 I I don't know why that's a thing, but it is a thing. But moving on, this is not what this conversation is about. So <laughs> we're gonna move on and 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 talk about what we're going to talk about today. So, you know. You, as I kind of mentioned earlier, I mean, you have had so many positions and have been in leadership in so in a variety of ways. And I just have kind of wondered kind of what your backstory a little bit, you know, like when was that moment where you kind of realized that you had a capacity for leadership and you could use that capacity for leadership or influence to really impact other people? That is a really good question. I've never been asked that before. I, I was uh, involved in leadership in high school, but that's that's really not where I came into it. I think in high school, um, I didn't look at it so much as leadership because these are the people I grew up with. I've been going to school with these folks for a long time. But when I got to college, 
I, I will never, ever, ever forget. Um, it was the first weekend, first week on campus, the African-American student organization at the University of Southern Mississippi had their meeting. And I'm in the meeting, it's like 200 black folks, right? And they yeah. start the meeting, but they, they did not start with prayer. So I was I was tripping. I ain't never been in no meeting with that many black folks and didn't know I pray. I wasn't <laughs> mad. I just was tripping. I was like, yeah, what yeah. is this? So I kind of I kind of made a joke about it. And the 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 um grad the advisor kind of caught was like, is there something somebody wants to say? And it's like, yeah, little bro say he ain't never been in a meeting where black folks ain't pray. <laughs> And she was, and she's like, well, why don't you pray for us? And I was like, oh my goodness. So I got up, I stood, I prayed, and 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 after that, it was that was literally what kind of launched me uh, into the campus life or the campus wow. scene with with the persona of of spiritual leaders, uh, um, a student leader. That was it. It was that moment. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's huge. I think. People underestimate the, in, in other words, they, we underestimate the catalytic moments in our life where literally it was for some reason, something happened and somebody for, I mean, obviously we know there's God's provisional will involved in that, but sure. literally not even trying to promote yourself or not even trying to put yourself in a moment where literally a variety of things happen and then there's an opportunity that pushes you into leadership or engaging with people i, exactly. I think it's so interesting and and such a profound thing that we sometimes underestimate in our lives because we don't because sometimes we i think for me even personally i see it as trivial sometimes <laughs> just how like literally it's it's a lob you know I, I, it's like jason kidd just threw the ball in the air and and yep. you know you caught it on the you know you just you know, windmilled it, you know? I think, I think, it, I think what's big too, and I, and I know I didn't, you know, it wasn't a lot of fan, fan, rah, rah in my story, but I, after that day, um, the way scripture says in Isaiah, when he says, and you will be sought after. I mean, I was literally being sought after and, and, and you can ask anybody that I went to school with, everybody like, everybody said, what you going to get involved in when you get to college? nothing i'm not getting anything i want to be on student government i'm done with that stuff i'm gonna live and do my that was it and and within 10 days i was already in the, in five or six different organizations wow and, um it was wow. I mean, it was a, it's been a blessing since then so yeah wow wow i mean so yeah i mean that the proof is in the pudding as as the old folks say uh it when, when it's when that thing is on you it just it, it doesn't matter what you try to do, you will be pushed in that direction. Um, so my next question for you is, obviously, it started there. It started at a moment in college. And even before that, I mean, you were involved in stuff in high school, but it started in this moment in college. How have you taken some of those things or taken those moments where you realize, OK, this is what it is. I can't outrun this. How did you take some of those things and just continue to build and grow in your leadership ability and skill? And how has that helped you navigate different phases of your career? Um, Miles Monroe, uh, in his book, um, the OG, I can't remember the, the name of it right now. There's a book on leadership that he wrote, and he and he he defines wisdom as the ability to apply knowledge effectively. Hmm. Wow. So I, when I read that, it resonated with me. And what I understood was that, that life is about what you do with every moment, whether that moment is negative, whether it's a negative experience, whether it's a, an amazing experience, all of those moments are, are um, teachable moments. Yeah. And so what I've learned about teachable moments is that you've got to take them when you recognize that's what they are. And you have to, and you're, going, and you're hearing me say, use this term a lot. You got to sit in it. Um, and for me to sit in it simply means to process it, understand it, feel it. What does this mean? 
And I've been, been able to attempt to try to use those in wisdom, all right? So what did I learn? All right, so how do I use that now? What do I understand about me? How, what does my self-awareness look like? And so I think that, I think over the years what I've attempted to do uh, was to, to take the collection of the pieces of my life that, yeah. that make who I am. I've attempted to try to take those pieces and then say, all right, how do I take what happened, what didn't happen, what could have happened, and then look forward and try to apply those uh, in systemic, rational ways that give me the kind of outcomes that I want? Yes, sir. Um, kind of that, that last point, you, you, you talked about like making systemic moves or looking at what didn't happen. Could you kind of unpack that a little bit for me? Because it seems as if we're in a moment where people are so bogged down by the reality of, okay, this person didn't get this job or they're experiencing a lot of loss in some ways. And because of the, the, the nature of this moment where there's, there's like, a lot of crisis happening right now, even as we're recording this right now, we obviously see that there's crisis of, with America just ending the war in, in Afghanistan. We're dealing with, we're still dealing with the serious problem of COVID. Mississippi has some of the highest rates of COVID cases right now. I mean, it's skyrocketing like crazy. I think, what was it last week or a week or so ago, we had an eighth grader pass away from COVID. You know, and, and then not to mention all of the financial things that are happening where the wealth gap is getting larger. We're still dealing with the issues of climate change. We're dealing with all these different things and people are getting bogged down with, I'm trying to move forward, but like, I don't feel like I'm advancing. I don't feel like I'm moving forward in some ways. I don't feel like it's changing for me. Kind of unpack for me some of those moments in your life where you they felt like drawbacks and you just figured out how to be ten, how to become tenacious and push through those things. Kind of unpack some of that for me. Well, I think, so I'm 43 years old and I, a lot of things that I, I, I seem to believe that even had I been told, even had I been taught, I would not have understood because I mm -hmm. think that that time allows for the development of what it allows for and, and what it's created for. So in other words, when we talk about seasons, you're, you're, 20, you're about to be 28 years old. There's an expectation that I don't have of you to understand certain things. You remember how you, your mom and them, you say, keep living? Yeah, yeah. So since God has graced me to keep living, I see, I see things differently than I saw it then. Now I understand backwards design. I understand things. I can see the forest despite the trees. When I was a younger man, I could only see trees and I can only see a few trees at a time. Yeah. And, and arrogance will make you believe that because you've seen a lot of trees that you understand the forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't. You only understand the forest as deep as you've gone into it. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Um, and so I, I, I think that on this side of trouble, on this side of uh, um, character building moments in my life, I'm able to literally see exactly what the text means when it says, for we know all things work together for good of them that love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. Yeah, yeah. So I, so, I, so I get it, right? I get it now. What does that mean? And when he says, um, what, what is that? What are all things working together for? They're working together uh, so that you can become the image of the sun. So you can become conformed to the image of the sun. Yeah. And what I recognize is that that image conforming process is a process. Yeah. It's a process. It is, it is a, and if you don't see it like oh, a process, my God. if you don't see it like a process, you'll you'll choke on the whole thing and then get frustrated because you ain't got it all at thirty eight. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, 
you didn't ask me this, but if I was going to give my younger self any advice, I would say to my younger self, just chill out. Yeah. It's going to come. What you don't know right away, what you don't understand, it's going to come and it's going to happen. And you're going to say, oh, that's what that was about. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think you just came for me uh, <laughs> because I, as a young person, that is the struggle of youth. Yeah. Like it is. We are so in a hurry as young people to get to the places that we've been dreaming about, that we believe that we can do, that we've been asking for, that we prayed about, that we've we've done all the work for. And we get so caught up in trying to get there that we miss the opportunity to be in the present and enjoy the realities of not having that responsibility. Because we don't a lot of times we don't. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. A lot of times we, I think we don't understand, and I'm going to say real quick and I'll let you respond, but a lot of times we, we don't understand the, the weight of what we're asking for. So we'll just, you know, we'll be like, man, I want it, man, I want it. Yes. I want to be this. I want to do this. I want to be with this person. I want to do this. I want to go there. I want to, you know, and we just don't literally, we miss out on the power of just the now and yeah. you know, we we kind of give us puts ourselves in some some tough situations because we're too busy trying to get somewhere instead of being right here. The the, the um, poster behind you um, said that the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Now let me tell you something. What's hard about that is nobody can talk about tomorrow. All we can talk about is today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. So, so, so to not be able to prepare for tomorrow today, it's an indictment on our ability to trust God for tomorrow. See? So, so when in scripture, um, when Joshua, uh, they're getting ready to go and, and God speaks to Joshua and he says, sanctify yourselves against the day for tomorrow. I will do great works among you, right? Joshua, you only have one job, my guy, and that's handle business today. Yeah. The only job, yeah. only because God got tomorrow. You, you ain't got but one job. Matter of fact, when you get done sanctifying, won't you go to sleep? Because ain't nothing you can do right. about right. tomorrow. You understand? And, and it, is a, it is a slick indictment on our inability to trust God with what we can't see. And, and, and then it becomes a matter of, and that's why, that's why Jesus would always rebuke Peter. And he would rebuke him by calling him Satan and Lucifer and all of that. You know why he would, because Lucifer had a control. And Peter always wanted to be in control. Yeah. When he couldn't, he was cussing, trying to cut your ear off, that kind of stuff. Right, because it exposed his inability to trust that Jesus had already said, I gotta go. Wow. Um, so you know, I think that we just gotta, well, me and, and my generation, we just gotta be sure that we let we let y'all know that number one, there is no trouble that you're gonna deal with at 27 years old. <laughs> hear me, hear me. I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me well. Yes, that, sir. That, that, that struggle, that problem, that issue, that right now, it seems like, feels like, looks like it's the most damnable thing ever happened in your life. But let me tell you a secret. In five years, won't nobody care. Yeah. It won't matter anymore. And, and that's the, that's the, that's the wisdom. We got to keep on letting y'all know. Look, okay, so what? You ain't done yet. So what? You hadn't gotten that job yet. So what? What you need to be doing right now is being sure that you're in a position where your capacity can be built. And while that capacity is being built under, because see, you're no more of an expert than your, uh, than your well of resources. Yeah. See? So, so the difference between me and my students is they know how to throw the round kick one way. 
I know how to throw a round kick a, a bunch of ways. Yeah, yeah. But when I was their age, I only knew how to throw the round kick the same way that they did. Yeah. But if they keep living, keep training, and persevere, they'll step right into it. And that's the same thing that brothers like you are going to be doing too. <laughs> prepare the day. Prepare the day. Be a good steward over the day. Be a good steward of the day. Uh, probably more. Well, I know I, I was about to say more than you realize. I needed to hear that, but honestly, because I know you hear him, <laughs> he told you to tell me that. So I, I, I don't thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I needed to hear that because I think that is the, the literal fear that I think just young leaders and young people deal with because we live in such a sensationalized culture that literally I, I was telling somebody this even the other day I'm like there's a lot of things that I feel or I might think or observe about what's happening that I tend to not say on social media yeah. because <laughs> because they go and dig stuff from 10 or 15 years ago on people like in in I, and I, I, you know, I, I don't typically have conversations. I do. I've recently been having a lot of conversations about cancel culture, but it is amazing to me that we in our culture from time to time, I'm not, I'm not saying some people don't need to be dragged, but it happens a lot in our society where we judge people or observe people's action based off the 15 year old self that they were like, we don't even think about in context that I was 15 years old and I was saying this, hmm. like, I don't have the, I don't have the life experience to recognize, wait, at 15, I didn't know this, or I, I didn't have the life experience or understanding that these things were true. I kind of talk to or share a little bit about how do we, like you said, five years, get past that moment because i think that's that's so hard because i think a lot some of us are so afraid of being held to a mistake or just in a, a just a former opinion that we might have changed at this point in life we're kind of talk about that and how can we literally live through it and yeah. get through those moments you know, unfortunately for, for you guys, you're living through this era um, where everything's about passing purity tests. And I'll be, I'll be frank with you. For as much as uh, your, your generation allows being free and um, um, free and liberal-minded, honestly, you're not. Because... For you, everything, for you guys, everything is just one way. And if, if when I was um, 15, I said uh, Public Enemy was the best rap group. And here's the problem. Here's the thing. At 15, you, I'm talking about, you was hard. I'm talking about, you was going off. <laughs> it's PE, Public Enemy, Valley of the Jeep Beats. I don't care what not, right? That, that. But then you realize, you know, 20, 20 years later, you, you're like, well, no, nah, it was Goody Mob. Goody Mob was good. <laughs> He's been helping a fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, collard greens too big for my jeans. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? And the, the, the issue is um, because you guys are held to this strict purity code, nobody has the room or the flexibility you change your minds. So here's here's my suggestion for combating that. Never be convicted, uh, or, or never have um, such a deep seated dogmatic conviction about anything but the scripture. Why why am I saying that? Because the scripture is the only thing that has the capacity to stand for itself even after you've gone. I can stand on scripture. I can be dogmatic about, about the Ten Commandments, or I can, I can be dogmatic about those things. 
I can't be dogmatic on how I feel about politics, right? I can't, I can't be that way because um, my politics has evolved over time. How I see uh, this country has evolved over time. And so I will say to you, don't you put yourself in a box. Don't start talking, uh, um, don't start using platitudes about it, 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 it as you're referencing things uh, as being the way, the only thing, because you have the right to change your mind. And the only person that can the only person that can discredit you of their right is yourself. Wow. When you don't allow other people to change theirs. Uh, I gotta move on. I have to move on. <laughs> Cause that'll you, ain't got, you ain't got no integrity on that no more. You, right, you lost right. your integrity. You right. don't have any integrity. Right, 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 right. And and to your point is is having the humility to say, hey, I just changed my mind on that. But a yep. lot of people are not willing to have the humility to say that. But I'm going to move on. Uh, yep. my, my, my next question for you is, as you are saying this to my generation or just saying this to just leaders in general, who are some of the people that you look to in those moments of crisis where when you were my age, 27, 28, <laughs> or you know, when you were starting out your career or in the middle of your career, who are some of the people that you kind of look to in those moments and said, okay, what is their example? Um, what, 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 what did they do or what, how did they carry out this situation and how did they respond that could be helpful to me in my approach to that situation? Um, <laughs> tell you what, let's do it this way. Uh, my, my life, I press reset on my life uh, about three years ago. Uh, I got divorced. Um, just just everything is, is is brand new, right? But that was a really, really tumultuous time of my life. One of the most difficult um, times to be able to, to understand. And I'll never forget, I've been freshly out of uh, the house, maybe three months, and the Lord told me to call two people. And they were former teachers of mine. One taught me eighth grade math, the other taught me geometry in high school. And I call, I text those brothers and ask them to meet me for lunch. And we met for lunch in Jackson at Char, and I didn't know what I was gonna say or do. I knew I wasn't comfortable with telling my business. So I just was like, all right, Lord, whatever you wanna do, how do you want this to go? Brother, let me tell you something. These guys have become not my mentors, but, but they have taken on the role of personally discipling me. I want you to understand the difference because one of the brothers, I'm with him three or four times a week because he gave me a job. The other brother, I talked to him three or four times a week because he gave me a job. And I recognize, I recognize the important name that Robert Mack and Dr. Earl Watkins. Dr. Wat Dr. Watkins was the former superintendent of Jackson Public Schools. Yeah. And he and I faced a similar uh, dilemma during our careers. And so we could relate and understand each other. Um, but I said all that to say this, find you somebody who you can hear. The only way you can hear them is if you can trust them. The only way you can trust them is if you respect them and vice versa, all right? But you got to find somebody you can hear. And when I say hear, I'm not talking about when they're saying what you like. Yeah. I'm talking about find somebody that when they're, when they're helping you to get your little happy self together, find you somebody where you can sit there and say, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. What else? Take you some notes. Right. Yes, sir. And then you can go and implement that. that that's my, that is. That, that's what I would tell anybody. You got to go back, find you a touch tone, find some place where you can plug in because wisdom, the scripture says uh, um, that we should wear her around our necks. What does that mean? It means that we should be yoked up with wisdom. Was that, what does wisdom mean? Gray hair, what does gray hair mean? It means folks who have done this before, they've walked down that street before. So they know the potholes so you get there. So stop, and, and God will give us what we need so that we don't have to be so worried about tomorrow. He's giving you people that have been down your tomorrow already. Yeah. So you just handle today, they'll be able to help you to navigate 
the potholes and the curves of life in tomorrow. Just trust God with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I such wisdom, and I, I appreciate that sentiment. And I think there, there's going to be people that watch this or listen to listen to this that realize that like humility and being willing to say, I don't have all the answers is the greatest thing and greatest policy to have as a young person because you will because you will always be sent teachers to give you access to information that will actually put you um, neons beyond the moment that you're in in, the, in your life right now. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I think I've been truly blessed in a lot of ways to have had teachers, whether I can have physically come in contact with them or have engaged them from a distance and seeing decisions that they made and seeing how they taken on the issue or seeing how they say, you know, I'm going to just do this a particular way and yeah. learn from that and be able to, okay, I might, okay, I might just do that different or, or I might need to be intentional in this regard. And so I think that everything you said was, ah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Um, you kind of talked about this phase in your life. Um, well, actually, I'm kind of going to start with that because I think this this question actually relates to what you were just talking about. And I'll ask the other question after this. But how have you found peace in this current stage of life? And and how have you like reinvented yourself? I mean, obviously, we all go through seasons and different things in our lives and people change. I mean, I can tell you right now for me. I am not the same person I was when I le first left Mississippi when I was, thank you. Uh, when I first left Mississippi in what, that was 2014 and okay. transferred to ORU, like I am not that same person. And it, it comes up in conversations that I have with my parents. My, my dad's a half time is like, this ain't the person I raised. And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's you, 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 you have that life experience of like living life and, you know, forming some of your own opinions and being exposed in certain ways to different information. Kind right. of share with me about how are you becoming okay and, and centered a lot in a lot of ways? How are you becoming or finding peace at this point? And how are you reinventing yourself and reinvigorating your hopes and dreams that you even have for your future, even now in the next phase of your life? That, those are great questions again, man. You're good at this. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> let me just say this, bro. Uh, Self-improvement, all that stuff, that's work. And it's intentionality. Yeah. Uh, being at peace has got, a, it's got a lot to do with being able to rest. Mm. So when Jesus Ooh. says, come unto me, all ye, all ye who are laden, and I'll give you rest. Yeah. When he says, casting all your cares on me, for I care for you. He talks about if you abide in me and I abide, 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 abide in you, you can ask what you will. Um, and I don't mean to be cliche-ish, uh, because nobody should think that this stuff happens overnight. It's like this... Um, where you wake up one day and you say, you know what? I'm, I'm supposed to have greater capacity than this. I'm supposed to have, I'm supposed to be producing greater works than this. I'm supposed yeah. to be, this can't be it. Like this can't be my cap. What, what is this? And so then you gotta, I don't know if you're familiar with process improvement, but some of process improvement says looking at all of the data, all of your output, and then making some real cold calculated decisions about the data that you see on your life. Hmm. And, and then you say, all right, I do this. I give this 28% of my time, but what's my ROI? Yeah. What am I, what am I really getting back? And what am I enjoying? Do I, what do I look? Wait a minute. So when I look at 75% of my life, 75% of it, I don't even enjoy I can't find no peace in that. 
Yeah. So yeah. the first thing you gotta do is you gotta you gotta evaluate um, every crack crevice corner of your life and determine what doesn't what doesn't need as much of your attention, time, and focus. Number two, you gotta let me tell you something. Where I am right now, I don't do nothing I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything I do, I love to do it. I, yes, I, sir. I my 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 lady friend asked me the other day. She said she said you think you got too much going on because I, I got real tired and I was exhausted and that happens. That's life. We're human, right? And she said you think you're doing too much. You, you you're consulting. You're on the road. You're teaching class. And I was like, oh no. Uh uh. I just gotta start going to bed at night because I <laughs> love teaching those children martial arts. I love yeah. training teachers. You know, I'm doing things I love, and I am telling you, sir. It makes a difference when you wake up to go do something because you love it versus you waking up to go do something because you're trying to support a lifestyle. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. I, 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 I. Listen, I have nothing to say to that. Uh, but, that's the, but that's the reinvention, though. The reinvention happens. It, it, it uh, the rebranding of yourself. So I haven't attempted to, and it's funny, you know my story, man. And, and, and I gave one speech this past weekend and everybody seemingly forgot how bad I lost in 2017. It's like, oh, you gotta, we need you to run again. We want you to run for share, run. I'm like, see, see, see how y'all are, see that? But what I, but, but there are always these moments that God's going to grace us with. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin E. Mays uh, captures it in a poem entitled uh, God's Minute. And in that, in that poem, he helps us to understand the power of every second, every minute, everything that we're doing. And, and, and you'll get a moment. You ain't trying to, look, all I was doing was trying to speak on behalf of uh, my friendly Vance. But that, that turned into something else that I hadn't, had no idea the stuff that I said weren't in my notes because I couldn't see them really well. Right. It's just about being able to see, discern those moments. Um, even I didn't know what I would say. I didn't know how I would say it, but I felt the moment. And yeah. that's what we've got to learn how to sit in that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I yeah, I, I would totally agree. Um, you know, I don't have as many uh, years, uh, but but I have had these moments. I I and I know you. It's something you're speaking to, and I think that this encouragement for me and people that's watching or listening to this, because I think we all can recognize those moments where literally it didn't. It, it's not even like you, like we talked about earlier. It's not even like you asked for it. It is something about being in the moment that you're supposed to be in where there is a grace for that specific moment. Yes, sir. And then you just do what you're supposed to do. That happened to me earlier this year. Um, I it, it seemed like it just came out of nowhere for school. When I, I, I you know, I just finished my master's early this year and mm -hmm. You know, just even that opportunity to get my master's like it, it's it's so funny to me when I think about it, because I'm like, you know, people are dealing with so much other stuff during the pandemic. I'm getting a whole master's in the pandemic. <laughs> you know, I got a full time job. You know, I mean, the opportunity just kind of came out of, you know, nowhere. I mean, it's nothing but God. But but the opportunity just kind of came and I wasn't expecting the opportunity. And then going through the master's program and, and getting an opportunity. And then they reached out to me maybe a week or two before uh, before graduation and was like, hey, um, would you mind being uh, the graduate speaker for the online medal ceremony? They had like a whole thing separate for graduate students. And I don't know if they were taught, you know, you don't know what who are having conversations about you. Right. You know, there you go. and and I rem literally I remember them reaching out to me and asking me and saying, you know, uh, Lee, would you be willing to, uh, you know, give some remarks at this event? And like, I, I don't, it, you, you know, this to be true. It was like all the words I needed to say just came to me. 
Like I wrote, I literally, I probably wrote my speech for graduation in about, it might've been 30 or 40 minutes and I had to go back and edit it and, and look at it and, you know, change some stuff in it just to make sure. But it was like, it just, it was just there. That happens. And then we get to graduation and I'm kind of I'm like, whoo, you know, the day I'm, you know, my brother, my family was here in Tulsa that weekend, they came up and, you know, it just, I mean, I really had a moment where I, I just started to weep because I was so grateful that God presented this moment for me to get my master's. But then on top of that, after all the things that I've experienced with just through going through undergrad and having the setbacks of undergrad. And then now at the, after fighting with ORU for three years, uh, for two classes, cause I transferred, you know, and finally getting done and then going and get my master's. And then as a, as a kind of one of those moments where it's like, this is God giving you an opportunity at the end of me, at least being done my education now, it's like, oh, they want you to be the graduate speaker and getting up there and speaking and sharing and literally having a moment on stage where, where I'm like, this is, I'm not even, this is like, this is just it. I'm not, I'm not even, I'm just saying what is on the page, but then I sometimes went off script and it was what I needed to say and not knowing what I said. And then they, you know, my professor, just so have my girlfriend actually was recording it. So I watched it back and I'm like, huh, okay. <laughs> you know, but just having those moments, as you, as you said, can be so potent for a person and reminds you of your value and reminds you of how you can make a difference in the spaces that you're supposed to make a difference in. And I think that's super encouraging. And I hope people hear that from you and recognize that like, if, if they're not doing that as far as like speaking in front of people, it could be just literally them at their cubicle, at their job, they're right. being themselves and being effective in the space you're supposed to be effective. Mm -hmm. It's easy there, you know? Yep. But, Absolutely. Yes, sir. So my next question for you, and I, we're kind of staying right there a little bit. You know, you kind of have touched on it. You kind of touched on tough moments in your life, but kind of talked about me a little about what you felt like was the most challenging, but also you, you kind of shared on that a little bit, but talk to me more, more about what are some of the most rewarding moments you have had in your career, especially in leadership positions where you look back and you said, man, man, I'm so grateful that I got the opportunity to do that. I'm so grateful that I got the opportunity to invest here. I'm, I'm, I'm so great. I got the opportunity to do it. Like, what are, what are some of those moments for you? Um, when the guy who installs my alarm system was one of my students. When, wow. and, um, when Ms. JSU was one of my students, former students. When, wow. Wow. Um, former students are in medical school. When I go in a hospital and a former student's a nurse uh, on the floor that I'm visiting and I hear, wow. hey, Mr. Java, or I hear, hey, Coach Java, or when um, uh, I'm on Twitter and I see um, one of the top female techies, app makers, entrepreneurs in the world, black woman, from Terry, Mississippi, who's one of my students. That's it. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's that's so good. Um, so I'm gonna kind of land the plane, as they say. Um, this is kind of my last question before I get to my final, final questions. Um, in what ways do you would you give some advice? Because I think you've been given a lot of wisdom and a lot of helpful um, thoughts for people. Um, and how they should approach their lives and how they should approach their work. But how can people like practically, let's talk about how can people rise, quote unquote, rise to the occasion and be ready for every moment? Because I think that there are people who will listen to this or watch this and say to themselves, man, you know, I don't know. I got this going on. I got this going on. I'm not sure about this, but, but I really, really want to be present when I have the opportunity to, to be effective then. So 
how, how can people prepare themselves to rise to the occasion and be ready to, you know, hit the ground running when they get the chance and opportunity? I, I think people have to practice living in their truth. Hmm. Because hmm. whatever that moment is that you're talking about, it wasn't created for your representative. It, it, was, it was created for, for the authentic you. You're about to make so, me get up. You're about to make me get up. A lot of times we, hey, time hey. we miss it, man, because we sent our representative to a meeting that God wanted the real you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so John P. Key says the thing that you want to hide is the thing that God wants to use. Dion Cole, the comedian, makes a joke about telling the truth, and he talks about how he got pulled over by a woman police officer, and he decided that he'd take a chance and tell the truth to her about how he felt. It ended up being a good time for him. What's the point? The point is, is, is when you neglect to live in your truth, you, you neglect to give people an opportunity um, to show you who they really are. Wow thereby setting you up to be disappointed by people who are only prepared to deal with your rep and not you, see? And so we're upset with folks when they break camp. We're upset with folks when they leave us. We're upset with folks when it's cause, cause they don't know you. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they don't know you. So I would challenge us to live in our truth, practice that, practice living, it's scary. It, 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 it's, it can be, it can create um, issues when it comes to vulnerable. Brene Brown talks about extensively yeah. her research around vulnerability. And, and, and I, think, I think that we've got to um, learn how to live, practice that every day. Give it, cause see, the only thing you really, the scripture says, oh, no man, nothing but the love him. But I think that in order for me to adequately love you, I got to be able to tell you the truth about who I am. Yeah. And I got to be willing to sometimes say, look, I don't even know. I'm trying to figure me out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That way, when that big moment comes, it ain't nothing for you. You know why? Because I've been living in this truth. I, I've been living, recognizing every day that I ain't nothing but filthy rags. If it, if it wasn't for, the, as old folks say, for the Lord who was on my side, where yeah. would I be, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's Lord, I am recognizing, I am saying out loud today that I got a thorn. It's been, I done prayed more than three times about. It ain't gone nowhere yet. I want all y'all to know I got one. So don't have no really, I, I can't climb or move that mountain. I'm yeah. going to tell y'all right now, it don't mean I don't love him. It don't mean I, I'm not walking with him. It don't mean I ain't with him. It just means what it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. I, you, you, <laughs> you about to make me clown on here. I'm trying not to. I'm like, I hadn't been to, I hadn't been physically in a church building in a while. And you about to I make did. me, you about to make me get up. And, uh, 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 as, uh, you know, uh, you know, this person, uh, <laughs> uh, Bishop McKissick, uh, Rudolph McKissick, mm -hmm. grandfather will walk, father will walk up there and put that Bible on his head. <laughs> That's immediately what just came to my mind, Justin. I want to be like, talk, sir. You know. Come on, yeah. <laughs> right, right. But let me let me get back on focus on, on what we're talking about. So here's my final few questions for you. Um, this has been tr truly an honor to have you on and just get your perspective about leadership and how our lives are impacted by our decisions and how we can take that wisdom of lived experience and say, you know what, I'm going to take what, what Pastor Yarber said. I'm going to take what Mary Yarber said and apply it to my life and actually realize that this can be helpful for me. So um, one of my last questions for you is, what are you reading or listening to right now? If you're in the podcast or in the books, are you checking out and, you know, actually growing from? You know, actually, there's a book that you should get. Uh, that I, I just copped about a week ago. It's called White Too Long. Um, it's about uh, the legacy of white supremacy in Christianity, American Christianity. It's written by a brother who, well, I'm saying brother. He, it's written by a brother who went to Forest Hill High School. Uh, his name is Robert P. Jones. You need to check it out. He, he gives a real raw uh, uh, analysis of um, 
And what's crazy is, is he calls it the legacy of white supremacy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> God, dog. Anyway, I ain't gonna get into all of that, but yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm in right now, man. Okay, okay. Um, so my second to last question is, you know, how are you paying it for it? I, I, I mean, obviously, you kind of touched on it earlier when you encounter, you know, former students or encounter young people that you've impacted, but. How are you paying it forward in a very practical way? Um, well, I have a, uh, there's what I consider a continuum of leadership that I think that I'm, that I'm on. Uh, and it's got three tracks. The first is you go from being the rage on the stage to being the guide on the side, uh, to being the fan in the stands. And I'm at a place in my life where I'm in between being the rage, coming down, I'm, I'm coming off. I'm still on, I still got some real good moves, real good two-step. Uh, I can still, you know, I can still move you for an hour and 15 minutes, but I recognize that there are, that, that scripture says that he calls the young because they're strong. And I want to be a part of making sure uh, that, that whoever's going to take that stage after me, that I'm able to uh, put a map in their face and say, all right, you get up here on this side of the stage, watch it because it's got about a 15 degree drop. Watch over here now. Uh, don't let the people fool you. They're, they're further away from you than they appear. You know, I want to be able to, to yes, do that and to be able to live coach in ways. Hey, be careful. Hey, watch that over there. You're doing good. Keep it up. So, so I think that my intentional uh, pay it forward is to just be able to do stuff like this with guys like you. Um, to be able to sit and um, do think alouds with, with folks who are uh, anticipating moving in the realm of leadership and, and just to be sure that I'm the guy, and I think, yeah, that I'm the guy who helps people to understand what it means to count the cost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And my last question for you, and I consider this my fun question for any person I uh, uh, interview, uh, and I kind of gave you a preemptive <laughs> uh, notion of what you might pick. Uh, and I'm so interested to hear this answer uh what is a song that you use to describe yourself and why mystical here i go <laughs> hey hey it's another one one more though it's it's uh it's r kelly he got a song called the oh, champions lord. here oh he got a song lord. called the champions oh, here oh lord oh lord <laughs> i ain't got nothing to do with that you asked me about a song <laughs> and the man got a song called The Champ is here. And I, I was a uh, I, I used to do full contact kickboxing. And oh, wow. uh I would come out. That was my fight song, The Champ is here. Oh wow. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I have nothing else to say as it relates to this. Uh we'll talk about this afterwards. Pastor, mayor, leader, friend. Tony Arbor, thank you so much for coming on Leading. I so appreciate you. And it's been a fun time just to get an opportunity to talk to you and reconnect with you on tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching and are listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee. If you have not done it yet, subscribe today on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. To get more information about me and what I'm doing, email me at scottconsultations at gmail.com or follow me on social media on Twitter and especially Instagram at Lee A. Scott II or Lee A. Scott II. Thank you for watching this week's episode. I really appreciate it. Much love and let's get started.